They're actually spitting in our face and saying, yeah, we'll report it, but we'll report it wrong. You know, it's always about pitching the, but even right now what I'm doing, just trying to record that this, you know, this nonsense goes on all the time. Uh, I'm only doing exactly what they want me to do, what the supercomputer want, is programmed to do, to cause me to do, and that's to engage in patterns, documenting everything that they do. That's a pattern. Everything they do is based on patterns, from mind control, which is decoding thought patterns, all the way to organized stalking, which is choice reference patterns, and everything in between. It's about their ability to engineer, identify, and develop patterns. Uh... Anyways, cheers. I'm here for you. Because as I have been hurt so often and for so long and in such serious extents, I just don't like people anymore. Okay? They're seeking to map out the victim's brain. Uh, to establish single coherent patterns of thought uh, in order to create a cognitive model of the victim's brain. And they're using trauma to do it. They're using trauma, physical and psychological trauma, to map out the sensory and neural pathways in the victim's brain and central nervous system. This shit goes on a hundred times a day. It varies what. But lately, I have been getting physically, like, uh, I've never had heartburn in my whole life. Um, this past week, I've been having it so bad that I feel like I gotta puke almost. Not to be gross, but that's true. You know, this is like most psychiatrists are saying this is dangerous and, you know, we won't let go of our delusions. Um, and that's a dangerous statement for a psychiatrist to make because when you're, you know, you're being cooked alive by directed energy weapons, uh, remote neural monitoring, um, stuff like that, and somebody's saying that you're delusional and you just won't let your delusions go. Um, it brings it into an even darker place, you know, where you can't get help and somebody's saying, you know, you need to let go of those delusions. This is the shit that they do. You know, I just turned this on and, you know, suddenly it's cutting off. You know, it wasn't doing that before, you know. Uh, and then when it, I, I turned it on at night, it, could, it would cut off. But, you know, here's the point. I, this is what the supercomputer is programmed to do. Because I still try to help people and to work and to be the person and then that's pretty much all I can ask for. I don't know how to help you people anymore. Uh, my muscles are sore um, and at work I was sitting in the truck and I just felt this wave of uh, heat I guess. Um, it didn't feel good. Uh, it was almost like, I can't even explain what I felt, it was like waves of it. Like when they, you guys hear about like people being abducted by aliens and stuff, well that's just NWO fucking with you through this technology, guys. No, they, they don't, don't worry, they must provoke you. If they cannot provoke you in one 24 hour period of time, then they have to start all over with a new uh, verification routine. Uh, it has to, you know, if they don't want to do that, it disrupts their technology. They must provoke the victim, capture the attention of the victim at regular intervals each day, each 24-hour period between the time he wakes up and the time he goes to sleep. Very important. Those are very important metrics for their training, research, and development. Okay? And this is how they do it. Because, you know what? My life's pretty damn normal. Who the fuck would want to... Watch and analyze who I am and what I do and where I'm from and what turn I make when I go to the bathroom, when I'm sleeping. I don't want you to get the wrong idea. You were here because you have free will. I don't want you to get the wrong thing Play to the peanut gallery Take your black pill Open your eyes Keep
everything you despise Open your eyes, they come after you They chase you down And they'll do their not done with you Gonna find out where you live Then they're gonna send the electronic engines in Cooking everything inside You gotta find a way To go invisible tonight Sometimes, <clears throat> do they throw one back? Greetings the name of the Most High. Um, yeah, you know, see, this is this is all well and good, and I'm probably going to, you know, I think in the last video, um, audio, a few people might have objected to this idea of invisibility because it goes at... Uh, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it seems like some sort of magical response to a mechanical situation, and it, it's not actually at all. But I understand that people are not ready to hear that, so I'm gonna. But I have something interesting to say today about uh, the targeted individual and the problem that you have is <clears throat> that the science is really, you know, I mean, I just kind of stumbled on this um, this situation. Because I had um, I had written some dialogue of a character that uh, that um, and it was really out of that stream of consciousness out of my mind. I felt like, well, I'm going to go recheck it later for research. You know what I mean? Because I'm not going to let it go out there and become you know a dialogue in a in a project or whatever without checking. You know, but but <clears throat> I sort of you know when I write in a fiction, what I love about fiction is. Um, you know, whether it be screenplay or novel, what I love about it is how it, um, this happened in Lamb, where I just knew that plane. It was a certain kind of plane, one that was pretty popular up in Alaska, and they had, they have them down in the Caribbean as well. And this plane, I, you know, there was a guy that, uh, flew these planes, was an expert in these planes, and I just really got into the plane and the, you know, just had a little bit of scientific knowledge about it. And um, about the engine, the engine fascinated me because it was a certain kind of a very powerful engine for these seaplanes, right? They land on pontoon or pontoon planes, if you like. And he goes, I can't believe it. I was reading that and I felt I was in the cockpit. I mean, that that was my experience. You you nailed it. How'd you do that? You never flown in one of these things. I said, that's just what I, it, you have no idea how powerful the mind is, how powerful it can be. And how intuitive and how, and how interconnected we all are. You have no idea. We're all interconnected. You know, that, that's the thing. There's no separate gang stalking thing. If one is stalked, we're all stalked. But people don't know. Some people are more sensitive to it than others. Other people have succumbed and, and become clones. But, um, the, 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 the people don't realize that the, the, of course, there's, there's, there's many levels to this. And, and, you know, it's, to describe it accurately is almost like bending into the supernatural because of the, how, how many levels it's on. You know, for example, that there's the technological level. There's the, um, but I'm going to lay a new one on you today. 
there's a technological level. Um, there's, you know, the, uh, the subject of game theory has been around a long time and I've studied it in actually in a psychology class is where I first kind of knew about it, but it's the study of mass of the mass consciousness and the manipulation of, of minds, you know, hearts and minds. It's also a game where you have, um, you set up various, uh, people that are opponents of other people. And a lot of the research on game theory comes out of the DOD, Department of Defense and DARPA and places like that, where they run these on war outcomes. Unlike, you know, they, they run, when they run war games, they're using game theory a lot of time to predict what the outcome would be. Now that all seems reasonable, right? <laughs> but they also do human experiments on people where they take, uh, say, a targeted individual and, and he's, he's the opponent that doesn't know he's being gamed you know, or stalked or whatever. He doesn't know he's targeted. The other people do know. And they, so they take the data by setting up a situation like that, say, um, working with, um, you know, I don't know, COINTELPRO or whatever kind of, you know, agency or, or, or whatever is going to orchestrate it at the human level. But then they also have the computer and the satellite level as well tied in. And, you know, and, and, and then they take data, the main, purpose a lot of the targeted individuals don't realize the whole purpose of of the targeting has been by and large the um the data collection from the actual events whether it be um the 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 physical gas lighting aspect that's i guess the gross aspect of it to being followed by say four white cars that seem to go everywhere you go you know to, to that aspect of the physical to surveillance, say the same car outside your house, you know, that you go to a whole new place in town, there's the same car, same license plate, you know, and all, all of it is designed to get a response from you, which then will be mapped and put into the data file of the manipulation of humans and mass consciousness, which goes to the heart of what it's, of really what it's going on. It's not so much trying to eliminate or, you know, like the old Stasi thing of, you know, the, 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 the non-desired persons being harassed to uh, to be taken out of um, a certain situation, like okay, to be moved out of a neighborhood would be one one aspect of gang stock. They don't they don't like someone. Maybe they, you know, back in the the fifties or something, it was like the color of their skin, or they were gay or they were you know whatever kind of minority thing and they would they would you know there'd be a, like a light form of gang stalking well but where we are today it's really gotten kind of out of hand i mean it's it's we're in levels now that uh i mean the last the last post i guess i post something on my facebook page i'm trying to keep it light over there i, I don't really get into anything i'm just trying to be an encouragement you know and it's life is hard enough without encouragement you know what i mean and and same thing on on twitter is just mainly a feed i use to put out my stuff but i'm shadow bound there so no one can see me so i i don't spend much time there and i'm not concerned about you know i know the subject matter that i've covered like this subject matter here where we left off <clears throat> last time i talked about this was the rise of the psychiatrist in completing the game, i.e. calling the opponent, one of the opponents or the person that as they discover they're a victim to then label them as a schizophrenic or a paranoid psychotic or, you know, something along those lines to then get from there to, to, to further ostracize the person and collect data at that point all the way to say suicide or some horrible thing that happens to people, or some kind of, you know, it might even be them, you know, intervening with an arrest or something, and then the person dies in a hospital, or, you know, you know, they map it out all the way to the very end. And then this is later used <clears throat> in um, to, to use on a more or less a mass scale. But when I say mass scale, what do I mean? I mean, you know, you, you realize that we've been breathing in all these aerosols and you know aluminum and barium and and strontium and all those kinds of things that from the 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 uh aerosol injection uh or geoengineering 
uh, into the skies, which have multiple, you know, there's a multiple reasons for that. But one is to electrify, <clears throat> to, to make a plasma where communications can occur, but that can also be used for untoward, an untoward, uh, manner, which would be to uh, harass individuals, obviously. And to, uh, to use that, that, uh, plasma to be able to target, uh, people from, you know, vast distances. And that, that in turn is, is for the purpose of mapping, <clears throat> um, the, uh, the responses. And then that in turn is used to then further write further scripts that the, the, the attack and response would both be mapped to see a cause and effect uh, relationship between the two to see how they're moving, able to move a human to, you know, I guess, I don't really know the purpose of like once a person is tortured, then they keep being tortured every day, what the purpose of that is. And then the psychiatrist deems that person is schizophrenic and then they just wind up dead. You know, to, to me, it just seems like it seems not just cruel, but stupid. You're right, because I mean, it, to me, the data points would be more interesting taking average person Joe, you know, and putting him in the game theory model, which basically they call hyper game theory when it comes to gang stalking, but it's beyond hyper game. And I will get into that in a minute. That's, that's, that's yesterday's news. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> so they, they, you know, get Joe, and Joe is an unwitting participant in the game, and everything is a game, okay? Everything is a game. The entire thing is a game. All of it, the entire earth is a game. And it, it's on many levels, but I mean, using these D wave supercomputers, right, to further map out, and then they're actually cloning like different models into different. Uh, universes, let's say, you know, digitally, digital universes, whatever, in order then to, 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 for the purpose of mass control, mass control of, of human, uh, without getting the free will consent necessarily for that kind of abuse, which goes against cosmic law of God. Okay. So the whole thing is trying to get around God's laws, you know, be able to attack people. And have God not be able to intervene and things like that, or be able to manipulate them into selling out to Satan, let's say. But really, what it wasn't them; it was mind control. You know what I mean? They they are just a clone now of themselves. But now it's it's gone to it, there's the, I stumbled in, upon another subject that's very very, you know, game theory is totally academic. Okay, you have to understand it's very heady stuff. It's very difficult to understand. The research has gone on for years and years. And um, again, most of the research, you know, goes on at MIT, DOD, um, you know, military uh, uh, think tanks in some cases, and uh, prominent universities. Like I say, MIT would be one. Stanford probably would be another one. And the the whole, you know, purpose of it, as I said, is ultimately to apply it to apply some kind of predictive programming or so, a predictive science. And, you know, to be able to manipulate the entire body of human to do what your will and not God's will and have and have no deviation. In other words, to be able to repeat the experiment to get the same result, whether it's Joe or John or Sally or Ann or whoever is going to be the initial target or the opponent. They're always called the opponent for some reason. Uh, the material is very dense. It's written by PhDs. It's just, it's for other academics. It's not something that the average reader would be able to, to comprehend or, you know, it's, it's, it would be very boring in nature. There's no reader's digest summary of it, but here's where I've gotten and I just scratched the surface. The real research today, uh, is at the, you know, molecular level. In other words, applying ga game theory. And this is what's so strange, because I had, uh, you know, a character in a piece of dialogue say something about game theory at the molecular level. I had to research it to make sure. I thought, ah, that sounds wild. Sure enough, uh, game theory at the molecular level is something that is going on, and um, it, it, it is it is a is a vast subject with a lot of. People participating in it and a lot of books being written about and articles are really just mainly white papers. But what it's saying is that why bother with controlling a human 
right? When you can do the same thing with molecules, you know, to be programmed through the computer. So if you can control these molecules at that same level and the game theory revolves around, okay, so what does, given everybody in the game has a certain amount of knowledge and then these people do and these people don't, what happens? You know what I mean? They're always running those kind of scenarios. Or what happens when there's two equal opponents, right? What, For example, they might, you know, to bring it back up to where we can understand out of the ivory tower, we might just say, well, what would it be like if we have two equal opponents where the, the target doesn't give a you-know-what and is ready to uh, take on the gang stalker and not run home and, you know, become paranoid or upset or, you know, and, 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 and knows full well about the uh, electronic harassment and the lack of sleep pattern, you know, to break a person down so that they're susceptible to this kind of torture of being stalked and harassed and, and, you know, where people have special knowledge and information that only he would know and, you know, just ter- terrifying things. But he doesn't care. He's a new kind of breed. He's like, okay, fine. You know, you bring a knife, I bring a gun. You know what I mean? And he becomes like a vigilante. He starts just blowing people away. You know what I mean? He just starts, uh, well, that's the subject of something I, I, I've already written. And it's uh, pretty darn good. It's pretty good. I mean, I love it. I love it. Watching someone fight back. I can only do it in fiction, though. Right, folks? I mean, but to to, to see... Someone that's got all this stuff going on, actually fighting back and blowing away the perps. Yeah, that's a movie I wouldn't want to see. It's just one episode, though, but it's, it's pretty cool. But uh, so what happens when it doesn't work where they don't go down the rabbit hole and into this and that and they don't get cornered and the torturing doesn't work and they, you know, they, how, how they, you know if they become immune to it <clears throat> or even develop a technology against it or even something that sends back the same as they've gotten or even better. And so, you know, so they've taken it to the molecular level as a way of addressing that and um, figuring that eventually human will become immune. And, you know, the, the, you see these, uh, these uh, groups getting together, you know, against government harassment. It's not your government. It's beyond the government. <laughs> it's beyond all governments. It's not, you know, you're not going to be able to petition the government and get any change whatsoever. I don't care who the president is. It's, it's it's an ongoing program, and it's on so many levels. It's on it's you know it's very much interdimensional in terms of you know there are levels where time and space doesn't matter because in the digital realm you can do anything you want. So uh, the idea of digitizing the human consciousness, creating clones, i.e., victims who have been uh, programmed by supercomputers that don't even know that they're programmed. And that's a big complaint people are having in the churches. It seems that more and more people are going robotic these days. Uh, same plot as, it's nothing new here, same plot as, um, uh, you know, invasion of the body snatchers. It's the same exact thing um, to where they, they really are pushing for, because the God that pushes all this, the, the entity that pushes all this stuff is Satan, right? I mean, we know that. And Satan is all about mass conformity. That means... You know, um, you know, doing the things of Satan, which would be, you know, basically do what thou wilt, but, but it would be do what you want, but we'll tell you what you want. And then, of course, it involves blackmail and, you know, doing perverse, illegal things and, and whatever in, 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 a, in a group setting in front of the group so that they have that, uh, so that they, 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 they induct you into further and further levels of depravity which are all legal in their world, and, and they, they then have a, exist in a um, hidden form, and they actually then rule over governments of the world. They, they tell the governments of the world what to do um, until they don't, you know, until the Lord rises somebody up and they find them. In other words, there's always this other force of, of good, of power of, of, of the Lord that comes in and says, no, and the whole civilization is smashed, and Satan is back at you know, back back in where he really belongs in squalor, in in a destitution, in a, in a uh, you know completely blown apart world that he himself uh, caused because he cannot create a world where he is worshipped and uh, everybody obeys him as the Most High God. That's just not going to happen. That's exactly what's going on, and it it always ends in the end of civilization. That's where it goes. 
Anyway, they have to get a little further. I mean, they've got CERN and the and the D waves, and they've got the um, you know the the uh, RMN, you know, of, of getting everybody's uh, mapping. You know, once they get it, they already have it mapped, and there is still harassment going on at the at the you know being people being beamed and and you know thought control and thought police and uh, injected thoughts. But the main thing now that's going on is the last phase we're in. It was really cloning and then, you know, hitting people massively, forcing them all to be clones, right? In other words, they they take consciousness or map someone's consciousness and then formulate their own what they would like, let's say, the ultimate outcome of the game, and then somehow inject that into the person that replaces the original consciousness. And then that person now is, is even though they don't feel any different, they are compliant to the over the overlord, whoever that is, and um, so the reason that that was not the most successful program is because um, I guess there are clone wars where you know where people are cloning, they're trying to clone people this way and that way. In other words, cloning personalities and re- reinjecting them in back into the population. Um, almost like reinjecting cells, like, you know, cells, healthy cells where there aren't healthy cells to fight cancer or something. You know, it's like, you know, reinjecting consciousness to get what you want. The problem is, and the reason that doesn't work, no, the torture goes on. The torture continues, you know, and, and people that are subjected to it are, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're fighting as best as they can and, and they're unfortunate victims in a, in, a, in a really nasty game. That's what it is. It's a game. A lot of it is just like an endless war game. But the thing that's going on now is this uh, this, this uh, game theory at the molecular level. right? They couldn't just stop at the human, a grouping of cells, a grouping of molecules. What if you could get down to each molecule and control that? Wouldn't that then control all the things made out of molecules? So then it's, it's got, well, that, that's a very rarefied, very, uh, probably a very cutting edge study. That's probably, you know, real brainiac stuff that's going on at MIT and other places and DOD and so forth. It's, uh, that's, it's really the impetus is really supposedly the way it all got going with that is, um, running these games to see who, what the outcome of a war would be. Same. In other words, running war games with game theory and, you know, and then there's the opponent that knows. It's almost like Sun Tzu Art of War. It's like the opponent that knows something, the opponent that doesn't know something. What if there's a traitor amongst them who converts to the uh, back to the other thing? What does that do to the other people? They're taking data from everyone. People that are stalkers are not just owned. They're also collecting data from that. Could there, they sometimes run it where they'll have somebody in the group who was part of that sort of criminality, uh, repent, you know, you know, betray them, and then how do they d- deal with that, and how does that affect the whole model? And they just keep running one model after another, the, whole, the bottom line always being the same thing. The mass control, it's, all, it's, it's about mass mind control. Even game theory at every level is always about mass mind control, big outcomes and wars, geopolitical events and so forth. It's, it's, a, it's not about the individual necessarily, but the individuals that are targeted are, you know, you know person A, let's say, uh, the opponent who doesn't know that the game is on. And then what happens to them and how do they progress? And, they, and like I say, the taking of data that goes into their big computers to figure out how to manipulate mass consciousness of people to do what they want. And as I said, this is not the first time we've had advanced technology. All throughout the ages, they have always failed and the model has blown up because there is a Most High God, Yahweh, and there is Jesus Christ. That's a real thing. And it's just never going to get to the point where you you take you know something the Creator makes you know, make it your own and then demand it worships you. You know what I mean? You know, it's a, it's a, a, it's, it's a fruitless effort. Now, do people suffer in the balance? Yes, of course they suffer. 
But taking the mass mind control to the molecular level, of course they would, because they're using nanotechnology, right? So they figure, well, it's much easier and faster to control molecules and thought waves, i.e. molecules, and even at the subatomic level, right? And then sweep over people with this nanoized kind of, you know, electrified plasma uh, atmosphere and then, you know, control masses that way. The problem is, is the masses are not, I mean, they are kind of being controlled. They are falling into certain patterns, but ultimately there's something very, very, very wrong. And here's where the good news comes in. What's wrong is God will never allow them to do it. And they have not done it. If they had done it, you would see a very different world today. They have not done it. They are struggling to do it, but they're wondering why it's not working on certain people. If it's nanotechnology, they're breathing in the chemicals, and they're drinking the chemicals, and they're eating the chemicals, and we have nanobots in their systems, and then we control those with our D-wave computers and digitization and satellites and whatever else we have in our technology. Uh, This thing should have been over a long time ago. And it isn't. And that's a big problem, given the advanced, how advanced the technology is. That's a big problem. And I could go back to Bishop Kanko, that, that one amazing interview we had where he talked about being taken into the sea and seeing the cities under the sea belonging to Satan. And these, what he called psychic computers that have mapped out all of human consciousness, every, every mind, every brain, every person is under surveillance by these psychic computers that are not of this world. So those have always been around. The technology has always been here for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. In fact, it's it's never been a situation where it hasn't been here, no matter how primitive humans uh, may be at any given stage in history. The advanced technology is still all, all around us, and even if, we don't, even if we don't know what it is. And it doesn't work either. So this releasing of this technology into this, you know, into our 3D space-time continuum so that these guys now have their hands on the super collider, which they give, which they want to open up the, the, the bottomless pit with and, and all this other stuff. These guys are all spiritual, you know. I mean, they're on the dark side, but they're all spiritual. They all do whatever they do to conjure the gods out of the other world into this one to give them more insight, more scientific data to do more of what they want to do, which is, you know, control, extinct, destroy, uh, make into a robot, transmogrify in some way the human being. To just, let me just sum it up. There goes some. To destroy that which God made. To control that which God made. To worship, you know, Lucifer rather than the creator. Right? To worship the created rather than the creator. To make the world a bunch of fools and idiots. Uh, the gang stalking, game theory, hyper game theory, and now molecular game theory, all of it used uh, for the end end game purpose of mass mass social control. Right? They've run endless, endless algorithms uh, that control individuals this way, that way, the other way, etc. And they have endless outcomes. Okay, if we do this to person A, person B will do that, person C. They map everybody. They don't just map the, 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 what they say, the target. It's not the target. They're they're called the opponent in the game. There are opponents and there are various players. And all the players uh, are mapped because everybody is going to be a little bit different. So the data will be different on each one. They want the data of all of it, of every participant every human agent in it, whether they know what's happening or not. So I kind of jumped ahead there to the, 
you know, molecular level. But of course, it makes sense. And I, I was just amazed as I was, you know, in fiction, how many times I've come up with something that is exactly spot on, exactly, exactly uh, the technology, exactly what's happening. You know, it's amazing how you tap into that, you know, and then how much we know that we don't let ourselves know, how, how prophetic that was. Well, no one will ever know. I mean, if it's if it's, it's a writing and a piece of fiction, you don't know anything. You know, you, you go do the research and you check to see if you were right or wrong on that point, and then it turns out you're right, then you're going, how did I know that? Well, because the universe, the, the, you know, God is just there. All the information is known. It just needs somebody to seek it out. You don't necessarily need to go to the Library of Congress to seek it out. You can just seek it out direct. And it'll come to you, the answer. And it'll blow your mind how many times. And I'm not saying people are always accurate. But it's amazing how many times we are accurate. You know, the, those who are, are writers. It's, uh, you know, amazing when you start trusting your, your instincts and trusting your process. You know, and then, because you can always go back and, and, you know, you can always amend any kind of thing uh, through further research. If, if, if there's a you know, mistake or whatever, it's no big deal. It's, it's, you know, usually there's not an outright mistake. It's like something's a little off, let's say. Now, I'm going to look more into the theory of, I mean, I'm only a novice, of course, in, in, in molecular game theory. I just was surprised there was a term, molecular game theory. And so for the people that think it's Hyper game theory or game theory, it's, you know, it's all coming from the same place at the DOD. It's all coming from mainly, mainly um, war games. Uh, you know, war games and outcomes to trying to predict what the outcome of a, say, a, a war with China and Russia would be and how, you know, what the individual would do, how they would react. And... Um, what what the outcome would be. And then, of course, like I say in these games, games require participants and opponents. And so what happens when, you know, when, okay, you have a target, that's the opponent, and then, then the subject of the game is, the game is then, you know, to harass and drive that person to a complete breakdown, and then what do all the other people do and how do we keep it covered up in society? I noticed that the rise of the psychiatrist is the rise of a new player, isn't it? We've seen this before back in the Soviet Union days, right? When the left, you know, the left, the global left communist, you know, the, the, I, I just call them the dark side. When they rise up and take power, then you see the rise of the psychiatrist because most of, of, of what psychiatry is concerned with most of what psychiatry is concerned with is um, our spiritual matters. You know, that, that a lot of what mental illness is, is is extreme demonic activity, demonic possession. A lot of it cannot be even dealt with without some kind of spiritual breakthrough. And, you know, the, they can medicate, they can, like schizophrenics, they put on medication, sometimes heavy tranquilizers, to, to, so they don't act up on hearing the voice, so they hear voices. Uh, the, the psychiatrists have been brought in to, to discredit all targeted individuals now. Some people said, well, I thought when we went mainstream and it was in all the news, it was everywhere, you know, and people, more and more articles are being written about it. I thought, hey, we're home free. We're going to have relief. Nope. Bring the psychiatrists in as another torture vehicle to then further ostracize the individuals so they have no voice whatsoever and no remedy. That's the point of the psychiatry, and that's the government's response or the globalist uh, authoritarian's response. Bring the psychiatrist into discredit. I've written about this quite a bit, and some of this stuff you'll see coming out, but it's, it's uh, the psychiatrists are, are in the way, and I think that's a very important thing now that they've come up, and whenever you have these TI meetings... There's always the psychiatrists that are being brought in as infiltrators in this new game we're playing. And it is a game. I know maybe people are, you know, messed up. They think, you know, they, they, they have all kinds of, um, 
You just have to ask yourself the question, what's the purpose of this? The purpose is not just to harass someone unto death. Oh, that, that's what they do. The purpose is, um, you know, to, to make, to, to do things, to play these games and to take data and to, to and to feed the data into these, uh, into the AI grid and ultimately to use AI to then control the population. That's the point of it. Uh, so far, they can't do it. So they bring the shrinks in. To f- for, it's the point of that, to further vilify the people, uh, to make them ostracized, to make them like uh, unable to have a gun or you know, to have rights, ultimately to sequester them in the, in the, uh, the new batch of mental hospitals they're going to build for the purpose of housing all these, you know, targeted individuals who are all mentally ill. That's the idea. That's the next phase of control. In other words, to make sure the issue never sees the light of day, never gets publicized. And there are monitors out there. I, I know for when, uh, you know, I had somebody read something I read. They go, how could you have this guy killing those people? I'm like, those are obviously criminals. And they're participating in this game. And they're hurting, uh, you know, people. Yeah, but do they deserve to be blown away? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Because they're part of a bigger process that is completely anti-human, you know, and even longing for a post-human world. The only reason they haven't been able to do it is because um, the resiliency of, of, you know, God's people who will not be programmed, who will not be cloned, who will who refuse to be victims of gang stalking, and they just will um, resist and have over the last couple, three decades and are reaping the benefits now of that, which is basically getting free of that harassment. You know, with me, I, what did I do? I prayed, I sought the Lord about this, you know, this sort of this, you know, these, these, these little tunes they're playing, you know, like the Navy fight song. I, I, I sought the Lord and I went to the Lord for healing. And then, you know, I, and, and I, well, everybody else was still getting symptoms and things that seemed like I was taken off of me at that time in 2004. So I was like, wow, you know, maybe it's true the Lord is the, 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 the healer of all our afflictions, but it doesn't mean that there hasn't been, you know, relapses and more of the same thing. And like I say, I've, I've had, um, you know, and I see a lot of people struggling with getting extreme vibes of negativity and nothing could be going wrong, but they're all bummed out and they want to die. You know, it's like, it's too extreme for what's happening. And I'm seeing that everywhere. So I'm, I'm looking at that like a uh, harassment from the electronic grid. Yeah. Of, of certain people being targeted uh, to suicide, you know, to suicide. I mean, it's more than thousands. It's like tens of thousands or maybe even hundreds of thousands. And I see the people closest to God are always getting harassed by this stuff too. And, you know, it's just like, you know, you're going to go into... I mean, I've had extreme gaslighting like the last couple of weeks in a couple of things, mainly in a shopping situation. You know what I mean? I mean, like we all know Walmart is famous for that. But it's it's hard to believe the coordination that, that, that happens. It's It's actually just almost impossible to believe. Well, here's what you do. If you have, you have to have courage, though, because it's scary stuff, right? And I'm sure they're mapping this out there, you know, but you, you, you throw it back at them. Like, I, 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 at one point, there was, like, several carts that, you know, arrived at a spot to stop me from pushing through. And they knew they were blocking me. It was, like, in, you know, kind of in an open area. It wasn't, it was, you know, it was ridiculous. It happened over and over and over everywhere I went. It was just like these blocking, blocking, blocking. And then words and stuff. I could hear my name being spoken, Zeph, and things like that, in the other aisle, in the other aisle, in the other aisle, and, and you know, all these kind of, like, thoughts or, you know, you know just this sort of, like, electrifying of my own uh, consciousness and things are happening. And so what do I do? Trish knows full well. I've 
Well, nobody listens to me, but if anyone ever did, I mean, you know, I get people like, you know, they're so-called experts in this field talking about their symptoms, figuring out that it's, you know, hypergame theory, supercomputers mapping, you know, RMN, all they get all that, but they don't, they don't seem to have any, they just see, you know, I, I, I don't know what to do. I've just kind of gone silent on it, you know, because I, I don't know what to say. There's like nothing I can, I, I can write about it. That's what I, I do. I write about it, you know, cause I can write. The first thing I ever wrote that had it in it was, um, the, uh, the, the screenplay society that became a you know a rubberized horror movie in in the late eighties early nineties and I, I um uh but that scene was you know all that was deleted you know they they took all that out yeah it's hard to get this there are defend listen man there are defenders of this realm and they they take issue I had a guy get mad at me for um you know uh, you know this this screenplay I was writing called the voice and he got mad and it's something i completed a couple of that's when i went kind of went back to work writing i completed that a few months ago and it's cooking along and there's there's going to be more i i i'll fill you in when it's when it's not going to be jinxed if i do <laughs> but um but it's got all this. I don't. I don't know if it's going to survive because I mean, this one guy, who's a fairly rational, just what I call a normal person out there, got all angry with me. It's like you know, how could you, you know, th- that this guy was a victim, my hero, one of you, like us, and uh, that the guy would fight back. It was like, oh my god! I mean, you know, the, the reaction was so strange. I couldn't believe it, but I realized, whoa! I mean. Wow. I mean, I, I've, I stepped on some territory there. I, they don't want this thing. They know all about it. The average guy knows about it. You're the only one that doesn't know about it. And when you encroach on their territory, i.e., I have a character, a great, great character who, uh, who's going to step up. He like you can't have that. It'll be like he's just you know the, the, this guy's crazy. He's just blowing away innocent people. I'm like, no, he's not. But then I realized what I was up against. The spirit in this guy was defending the world system that includes targeting of individuals, and that no targeted individual should ever speak up and complain about the torture that's being done to them. They should be voiceless, where these guys make it look like they're the heroes, they're the rational ones, and the guy that's acting up, if he fights back, oh, he's crazy, you see? And he wanted to rewrite the director guy. He wanted to rewrite it. Massively. In other words, neutralize the threat of something true in, in some piece of fiction that, that could, could be potentially become a motion picture or a TV show or something that you would take, that you would neuter, that you would somehow change the story, just like happened to me before. They just change it so it just didn't happen, you see. They don't want you to say anything. Who's they? Average guy out there is they. Your neighbor. Your neighbor. Quit looking to the, you know, to the, to the satellites, the DOD and this and that. All these big perps are after you. The neighbor wants it to, if they're going to neutralize it. And I think gang stalking is a great topic. This is my new sort of, uh, this Mandela effect is a good topic that I want to write about and I want to go further with. I'd like to get into this, uh, um, you know, the, the, a little bit of, um, about the cloning of consciousness and mass mind control through, you know, remote neural mapping and monitoring and injecting. You know, I want to get into, uh, you know, we've, we've all seen, you know, more and more 
uh, you know, exposure about uh, directed energy weapons, microwaves and things like that, and EMF. And uh, what people don't understand is that EMF is everywhere around us. EMF is everywhere. Wherever there's electricity, there's EMF, electromagnetic uh, frequency. Everywhere around. And can those be carrier frequencies of information or images or... Yeah, they can... Yeah, you know, you can manipulate that. You can manipulate mankind. But they haven't manipulated mankind uh, uh, except for this. That the real perps aren't the guys with the computers and the technology and even, or even the people running the game. The real perps are the people and you're not one of them. That's the issue. And I, I found, how did I find out? Because of what I, but the reaction to a screenplay that I had complained, I was all excited about it. And boy, oh boy, I just couldn't, under, it took me like six months to figure out that reaction, what that actually meant. Now I, it's very disturbing because I now I know what it means. It means that there are people out there, they're, they're like minders, okay? And they don't want this stuff getting out. So they say, well, Zeph is crazy. He's obviously a, a paranoid delusional to think that this is really a real thing that's happening. These people that claim to be gang stock, they're all nuts. They're all schizophrenics. They're all paranoid psychotics. They all, they all need treatment. They belong in the mental hospital. And that was this guy's attitude. He was like a creative guy. So don't, it doesn't, no, all creative people are not, you know, nice, not good people. When there's a real possibility of it getting, you know, it's, we, we were, well, we went another way with another project. But I mean, the thing is, is eventually that'll get done. And I, I don't know how long it'll last. I have, uh, one very anchored lead character that's a Hispanic woman, PhD, brainiac, you know, that's a great character. She gives talks to the TI community to the, can you imagine seeing that in a, right, a talk to the TI community and then, and then she's interrupted by a psychiatrist who actually takes the mic and starts harassing her. And that, that, that play back and forth is very interesting to me. Will it survive to, to, be publicly consumed. Uh, I, I give it right now about 40, 60, about 40% maybe. Will it survive to be any in any form, shape at all? Yeah, they love to take things like that and mutate them into something benign and then let it fail, right? Let, let it get bad ratings and fail. Because if you just did what it, what's there, it would get great ratings and succeed, right? Because people are very interested in this. But once you, you know, geld it, then it just, people don't know, well, what's this this film about or what's this TV show about? Or what's this movie about? What's it about? And it, it kind of blurs the edges. It's got some supernatural stuff in it. It's got some cool stuff, but ultimately it, it's a lot of noise about nothing, right? That's like most of your movies today. That's why this John Wick 3 that's coming out today is going to be a tremendous, I predict, a tremendous box office hit because it's, it delivers the politically incorrect goods, doesn't it? Yeah, a huge body count last time. This time, two and a half hours of nothing but blowing people away, which I will relish every second of it. I probably won't see it again. I've never had the need to see them twice. But I've enjoyed, I've enjoyed it. I, like, I want to be in a theater with other people, too. Because they'll be, I guarantee you, they'll be cheering it on. Yeah. Well, you know, uh, I, w I was a fan of that film just because it started, you know, not as a franchise, but just a little film about revenge, you know, and about a guy that wanted to quit being an assassin, how he, he just karmically was brought back in again, and then how he dealt with it, and then... They did a sequel, and that exceeded the first one, and this one's going to exceed those two. And so the idea that the sequels never measure up is, is false. They will all, all, all sequels would measure up and even do better than the, the thing before them if they deliver the goods, if they keep the audience in mind, which they don't. So they won't. 
Yeah, there's no, I mean, you think the public is stupid. Hollywood's really stupid. How much money they waste. But that's just the way it is. You know, if the people liked the sort of revenge thing and the fact he was trying to get out and trying to have a normal life, but he kept getting reeled back in. And yeah, but then when it came, push came to shove, the guy just could blow all these people away because he's so well trained. And that's what they liked. You just get, if you give that to them again, it'll succeed. If you don't, it won't. If you decide to make an art film out of it, it probably won't. But people are, you know, they, they don't look at what worked in the one before. And so let, they, here's how they think in, in Hollywood, unfortunately. They think, oh, this worked, but now this time, let's, let's, let's look at it. Let's make it a little more hip. Let's make it a little more cool. Let's go more this way with it. And so it's their idea rather than going off what worked. And so that's what Frank Zappa put it best about music because music is the same as, as, you know, music is ruined. The music business is a complete joke and completely ruined. I think everyone agrees with that. Okay. It's, it's, it's hilarious, actually. Well, it's also pathetic for old rock stars like Metallica. I mean, it's so pathetic. It's just, it's, I, I, you know, it's great. They have a big crowd. It's, you know, it's like WWE wrestling or something, but it's, it's, I, I can't even explain it. I've just, I, I watched, uh, I saw that last night in a big concert. But here's the thing Frank Zappa said, look, and this is back when he was a pretty young guy. He was a big time record producer on the, on the, on the Sunset Strip, actually. And he, um, he said, you know, the exper- a lot of experimental music got, you know, produced and released to the public. Music that otherwise wouldn't have been produced. A lot of just, you know, and I know that kind of music. I know I was a big fan of that experimental music. I, I couldn't get enough of it. You know, you'd see a concert and they'd take one song and go 45 minutes with it. And it just, just jamming freely and going wherever and then coming back into the theme and, you know, really, you know, really being creative and, and, uh, just a lot of things like that, using music as a soundscape at times and very creative stuff, you know, that, that, uh, so he said, look, the guys back then who approved that music, these were the old guy, the old cigar chompers. They were old guys chomping on cigars. And they don't know what music is. They go, well, what is it? He said, I don't know. Let's put it out there and see what happens. They put it out there and it sold w- like hotcakes. It sold wildly. Right? So then the new batch of executives came in. Trendy, cool, cool clothes, you know. And they, instead of being executives of a record company, they want to be cool. They want to have their, their stamp on it. They want to be influential. And they've guided the music business to where it is today. Right. In other words... The idea of free artists creating something experimental or really, you know, using their creativity and then getting that down in vinyl to where the public could actually get get a piece of that and, and feel that energy and feel that freedom, you know. I think it's all about freedom. I think they couldn't have that, that free-form music out there because it was too much freedom for people. I used to listen, that's why I used to listen to college stations when I was, I guess, in the 80s and part of the 90s i'd listen to the because they would have these like electronica sort of dub jam type things going on like all night you know with you know with minimal electronica with all kinds of like primitive things dubbed into it all kinds of different aspects and we just go on and on and on for you know two hours again i enjoyed the freedom i enjoyed the freedom of that of that you know that's that's where it wound up i mean we wound up you know trying to get it from there but as far as the cigar chomping guys, they, they disappeared. The trendy hip guys came in and then they destroyed the music. It all became, give me a three minute song. It's got to be a hit. And that's all they cared about. You know what I mean? Here's what they want. And they became the intermediary between the public and the artist. And then they decided they knew what was best for everybody. So they destroyed the artists and they destroyed the public and they destroyed music and they destroyed everything in the name of their trendy, cool, uh, PC, uh, idiotic lives. But, you know, a nice, clean Porsche Ferrari sure looks good, all waxed up on Sunset Boulevard, you know, when they're going into the, uh, to the, their big office. Sure looks good, yeah. It all becomes about that and not about the music, and then so that's the end of it. They still don't know what's wrong. <laughs> I still, they still don't know what happened because the public 
uneducated now about what music is, having no history of the past or what came before, gobbles it up. They do what they're told. Game theory in action. Music, movies, TV, entertainment, it's just a weaponized game of mind control and soul scalping, period. So there are some of us, you know, trying to push back at this point. And, and uh, you know, but again, it's maybe we have to go all the way to complete zombie land, to total... People are becoming zombies before our eyes because they're, the lights are just going out. They're just dead men walking. I used to think it was stupidity. Now it's gone beyond stupidity. It's, it was stupidity, and now it's, it's gone. The word gone applies. They're just not, there's just nobody home. Well, for me, I don't care. I mean, I just, you know, it's like, I, I sort of, my attitude on that is rest in peace, you know. I pray for the living, not for the dead. And I got enough to worry about with the people I know around me. They're hurting and suffering, and they're, they're the living, you know, being preyed upon by the dead, and that, and they need prayer. And you know, that's that's what twenty on twenty is about. It's like we need to free the captives, and captives are still human, and they're they're not robots yet, and they're not zombies, and they have not given in. They're just trying to live a decent life. And boy, I tell you, at the end of days here. Satan is doing everything he can to ruin everybody's life. To the, that, that little remnant that's surviving of Yahweh, he can't have that. His game, you know, uh, it, it's funny. Remember the, 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 uh, the Rolling Stones, the tour, uh, the, the Stones are, the, they're still touring their back. They're touring, <laughs> uh, you know, they'll probably just go until they croak. I don't know. You know, I, I, I don't really care. Um, but in when they used to do good music, Sympathy for the Devil, uh, which was a pretty good song, and said, well, what's puzzling you is the nature of my game. The word game is so beautifully put in that song. I think even the writer, even Mick Jagger, probably didn't even know what he was writing about. But the nature of the game is high technology. The nature of the game is gang stalking. The nature of the game is persecution of uh, the living as opposed to the dead who are the masses. The masses are the dead. The living is the remnant. Okay, that's that's where we're at. Uh, we need to pray over each other. We need to be friends with each other, regardless of political affiliation, race, color, or creed. We need to be supportive of one another because if you see another intact human being, and they say they're, uh, you know, they're, they, 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 they believe in the, you know, some Martian religion or the religion of the pa- phases of the moon or something. It's all right. You know what I mean? It's another b- human being, man. It's another living being. It's another, this person has a chance. Look at the rest of them. We're in a robot factory. Look, they're all become robots except just a few people. And then the psychiatrists are coming at you saying, you have some kind of paranoid narcissistic disorder if you think you're somehow special and living and they're not. And this is very dangerous. It's like, no, I'm simply observing reality, sir. The psychiatrist becoming the policeman of the future. The psychiatrist becoming, and it's not just, it's psych, psychologist, psychiatrist, uh, you know, counselors, you just people involved in that, you know, in psychology. Psychology is very much a big part of the game theory and a big part of gang stalking. Yeah. Well, someone pointed out to me game theory. I, did, I wasn't unfamiliar with it until when I got back into it again as a subject, I realized I'd studied this, you know, in college. I, I, I understand. I, okay, I get it. I get it. It originally applied to mass advertising back in the 50s, yeah. So, I mean, you know, and also the DOD, you know, war games and outcomes. So, yeah, but uh, the thing I stumbled on lately, like I say, molecular game theory, that's, uh, in other words, the, the, the dealing with something not human, molecules, as opposed to the whole being, and then we get into waves, energy waves, you know, can energy waves affect mass psychology? The answer is yes. But there's something that happens to the people of the Most High God where they just 
don't get manipulated. They, they might a little bit, but they don't ultimately go over to zombie land. And that's something they can't figure out. It's like, you know, they're trying to, to, to figure out how to get the free will inadvertently. The whole point of this is to get, there is a point. What's the point of the gang stalking and all that is to get the person to ultimately say commit suicide, i.e. give their free will choice to death, i.e. You know, showing the failure in the eyes of God or something to that effect, whatever they believe in that regard. But basically it's to get free will. A lot of times social harassment and public harassment is to get that person to change and to do something with their free will that would be the point of the pressure in the first place and thus to then, you know, scalp that soul. They can't touch that soul, that thing that God made. They can't do that unless you have free will consent. So they will lay, lay up the pressure on that person until they give their free will consent. And usually what they do is they take the soul, but they keep the harassment up. They, they make it look like the target's going to get out of jail, going to get stop being harassed, it's going to get on the other side of things, only to find out that they may have made a great mistake and maybe even worse. No worries. Repent. Uh, repent again. Or repent again that, you know, that you, you were fooled, you were manipulated. It's not really of your own free will. They don't really have the right to take that. That is yours. And, uh, follow Jesus. That's my advice because I know the following Jesus equals freedom from this situation. Well, following Jesus is a, it, first of all, it's a mystery. There's no real following Jesus. It's, it's who follows who. It's, it's, belonging to Christ, but then that's a mystery as well, not of our own choosing and the time and the date of that acknowledgement or that, that connection or that consummation or that baptism by fire. That's not of our choose. It's of our choosing, but it's not of our time, our timing. It's something that you can't force God's hand. It's, it's just, it's strange, but I just say, go, go there anyway and, and just don't leave. You don't have the ability to walk out of this matrix on your own or under your own wits. No human does on earth. Nobody. Nobody can walk out of here. Not one person can walk out of here. Not even one. And the people act like, well, this is fine. So you live. It's really shitty. Then you die. You know, screw it. I'll just do what I want. And it's like, well, yeah, have that attitude if you like. Go ahead and give up. You know, be one of them. Become a zombie out for lust or for, for self-aggrandizement or some sort of ego trip. Go ahead. All you're doing is wasting time. Precious time. Precious time. Precious time. Nothing we do is permanent. Nothing we do will last. So if everything you do is for the Lord, who has you doing some pretty amazing things, including jumping out of airplanes, prancing around on a stage, who knows where the Lord will put you? In it, not of it, you could be anywhere, everywhere. But it's like a different energy. When you win, the Lord wins. The light is amplified. Humanity comes closer to comfort, salvation, relief, healing, love, beauty, true passion, as opposed to uh, selfish cultism, I suppose, narcissism. I saw uh, the new narcissism is, is it's fascinating. Have you read anything about that? Uh, the new narcissism is, is um, I, I saw this a beautiful woman and she's kissing herself in the mirror. And she was saying that she prefers to, to have a, a, you know, a night in with her loved one herself. And <laughs> I'm not kidding. This is a big, it's part of the whole gender uh, identity thing. You know, some people are, that what they call it, solo um, something, solo something rather, but it's about 
people that are in love with themselves, which is a really a new, you know, and, and like I say, they do kiss the mirror and, um, they do, you know, talk to themselves lovingly and they do want to spend their evening at home cuddling with themselves and they can think of no better company to have but themselves. Now, I know a lot of you are thinking, well, I'd be lonely, and but they're not lonely. They're very, they try to find time to, to get alone so they could be with their loved one, themselves. The fact that this now has an official scientific name, it has an actual identity in society, uh, we can't be far from the end. <laughs> we can't be far from the end. Where people, you know, the, what does the Bible say? They'll be lovers of themselves. Worshipping the created rather than the creator. Believing themselves wise, they became fools. Yes, they'll be lovers of themselves. And I suppose if they're going to give love or receive love from anyone else intimately, it'd be someone that looks like them. You know, that seems most like them would be the one they would fall in love with and have relations with. Well, it's, you know, it sounds kind of funny, but it's actually, with everything I've seen the last, I'd say about the last year or two, nothing surprises me anymore. It's it's it's, it's a, just another disturbing trend. The most disturbing trend for me is the rise of the psychiatry to quash the gang stalking testimony. I think that is the, we realize there are millions and millions of people that are under this gang stalking thing. There's no, the, the app, well, because you see, once they get someone, then it's over, really. They have to look for new blood. Oh, they'll follow that thing to its conclusion, you know. Uh, you know what I mean? That, that person's under their control. But then they have to go to a new one and another one and another one. Pretty soon it adds up to thousands and thousands and thousands and millions of people. It's amazing how many people, how many conferences there are and how many people are getting together and wanting to stop the electronic harassment and stop the torture. But, you know, it can't... It's being run by by pretty much supercomputers now, AI, and people are being triggered into their behaviors. The, the whole thing, it's an ongoing game that has, there's no, there's no off switch. That It never stops. Well, that's why I like going invisible. When I go invisible, they go invisible. So when they can't see me, what happens? They have to be able to see me on the board, right? If they can't see me on the board, what happens? Goodbye. They have to start over. That's right. And if, if, do they do that? Uh, not really. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah, they probably will. But it's it's a matter of co, it's co-invisibility, isn't it? You're invisible and they're invisible at that same moment. So there's no connection and that record is sponged. And gone, so it would be a, a new, a, a new, uh, a new victim. Would they choose you? I don't know. Do you fit the profile of a uh, player opponent number one who is doesn't know he's a player or opponent? No, you already know. Do they go to people that already know? Not usually. No. So you're probably going to be left alone. Yeah, probably I'm going to be left alone now. Except for these random things, which are like, you know, like I say, uh, I, I do get sometimes these electrical anomalies around me. I, I don't know whether I'm causing it or it's, it's just happening or, you know, from time to time. Oh, it's a struggle. Yeah, no, the spiritual warfare is a big struggle. That doesn't ease up because... The problem with spiritual warfare and why it doesn't ease up is because, you know, it's all part of the same game, right? It's all the same game. Game theory, spiritual warfare, gang stalking, supernatural, occult, satanic ritual, satanic ritual abuse, human trafficking, right? Aliens, other people, hollow earth theory, whatever. It's all part of the same big game. I don't think X-Files went far enough. I mean, you know, the thing is, is what I want to see is a, 
I want to look at this gang stalking. I want to see gaslighting. I want to see uh, huge data centers that are uh, algorithms, people on computers manipulating masses of people. I want to see the interface with Hollywood propaganda machine. I want to see the interface with everybody. Everything is tied in. Everything is connected to this. Long before there was such a thing as known AI, they had AI for thousands of years. They're called psychic computers. Now, thousands of years, they were the all-seeing eye over the entire human grid. Thought control. You know, there was kind of an interesting thing about thought control that I saw. It had to do with Bonnie and Clyde. How the public worshipped Bonnie and Clyde as celebrities. They would just take a guy, you know, out on the highway, you know, like, like if they were being stopped by a police for, you know, because they were driving too fast, whatever. And they would just go over there and take a shotgun and shoot the guy's head off, just blow his head clean off, leave him in the middle of the road for the crows to eat, and drive on. Public cheering them on. Whoa, man. What the is that? Cheering on the murderers. So they're part of it. So I told you, your neighbor's the most dangerous, right? So those people cheering on Bonnie and Clyde, they're part of shooting the cop in the face with a shotgun. Well, I'm glad that, you know, I think Kevin Costner did a movie about, uh, I forget the name, Highwaymen or something, and, and uh, I saw it the other night. And, you know, at least they kind of corrected the record to, to make Bonnie and Clyde not so romantic. Yeah, they're criminals, that's all. But the public, to see them cheering them on, I, granted, it was the Depression at the time. Uh, you know, people didn't have anything. They were starving to death. I mean, you know, I understand how, you know, they were kind of like Robin Hood. They'd, they'd rob the banks. They'd give some money to little people. I understand that. But, I mean, still, uh, the immorality of, of, of the United States at that time was just off the charts. Yeah, the corruption and criminality across the board in the United States was not just validated, but it was, it was, it was uh, institutionalized as normal and became a rite of passage for children to grow up They'd have to give a nod and a wink to that. You can't give a nod and a wink to the devil and then expect that Jesus would take it. It's, 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 it's Matthew 7, 21, 22, 23. Depart from me, I never knew you. Deal breaker, end of story. But, so what the preachers did is they softened up and they started telling the people what they want to hear. And it's like, it's okay to... Uh, bow down to the corruption as long as your heart's with Jesus. Okay, fine. Just do anything. Just eat your own entrails then. Fine. Greg, cut your head off. Fine. Kill people you don't like. Fine. It's all good. It's all good in Christ. Gossip. Slander your neighbors. Bugger your children. Traffic in prostitution and drugs. Whatever. Times of depression, they cheer it on. Maybe Bonnie will look at me. Maybe some of that luck will rub out. Maybe I should go rob a bank, you know? And uh, that was the response back then. I mean, none of you, and we were not here, were we? What I'm trying to point out is the same crap that's going on today was going on then. And... People are what they are. <laughs> the biggest enemy of man is man. Now you put two people together. You, know, you put two people of no money, no nothing. You both live on an island. One guy has extra palm fronds on his roof and the other guy doesn't have them. What do you want to bet at some point he's going to steal those palm fronds and get put them on his roof 
and tell the other guy to F off. Uh, this is going to be a challenge here. Okay. All righty. Well, yeah, short, sweet, and to the point today. You know, I think um, the, the main thing about this show today is just to, first of all, talk about the universality of spiritual warfare. And like I say, after all the research I've done and all the, and you know, and I still, I have, you know, traumas and things that just can't be fixed. And, um, yeah, my friends understand, you know what I mean? There's damage that's been done that can't really be fixed, you know? And, uh, I know people are being tortured right now and there's damage being done that probably won't ever be fixed there too. You know, we'll never be able to really be social people. Many of it. I mean, a lot of us, I guess, are, can be. But once they've done enough to you, once enough things have happened, you never really, you know, you know, recovery being what you're a gregarious person that, that, uh, goes to various, uh, events and socializes with your fellow human. Um, now they ruin that for me. There, there can be no gathering for me in, in any respect, shape, way, or form because, um, no crowds, no, because I, I hear and see everything. I'm, I'm too empathic. I'm too, um, too hypersensitive to, uh, things happening and too, too much go into, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to explain. It's just, it's, I used to be when I was really young, you know, I would enjoy, uh, you know, a, uh, a ball game, let's say a concert, a social event, a wedding, seeing some old friends, you know, those days went a long time ago. I, I wish they wouldn't have traumatized me psychologically, you know, to the point and, 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 and physically to the point of being, you know, what I would say, uh, uh, crippled. It's not something I talk about very often, but it's one of the impetus, it is an impetus for me being, people say, so you can't live a normal life? No, I can't live a normal life. So, well, let us help you. We're psychiatrists. No, 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 no. Things happen to people. Okay? And it, it doesn't, it's, you do what you can do. You make your contribution the best you can make given your circumstances. And you know what? If other people don't understand or they think everyone should be the same and everyone, we, you know, let's all gather down by the river and sing praise to Jesus, it ain't going to happen for this guy here. Well, the Bible says you shouldn't shun the idea of getting together. Well, we do get together here and there. Sometimes I do a recording, but I'm very much a behind-the-scenes kind of person. But I never used to be that way. I was very open, like an open book, very open hearted, very, very, you know, very giving, you know, very trusting of people. And they destroyed that. But, but the, but the lasting effects are what I've noticed is, okay, maybe God will take it off of me some take it, whatever it is, a million different things. But, um, no, I'm, I'm, this is it. If they cut your arms and legs off, then I guess you're going to have to get around in a wheelchair. If they take that part of you that was uh, loving and gregarious and social and all that away, then I suppose you're going to be more or less a recluse or behind the scenes or something like that. But I didn't do it, man. I'm a sensitive individual. I could I could take so much. And then after, after a while, you know, there was no bouncing back. There was no healing. The, 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 you could still hear the voices. You, you know, and when I say voices, you know, the voices, the real voices of uh discontent and, and and abuse and and it's like you know so you just tend to um the reason i'm mentioning this is i don't want people out there to like beat yourselves up you go oh, i can't do this and i can't do that i'm just a permanent victim no you're not but that damage is really palpable and real you may not be able to live a normal life again because of what they've done to you that's very sad because society will not acknowledge it. They'll just say, you're a loser. Well, I don't complain about it. I don't mention it that much. I mean, this is it now. 
But I mean, that's, I don't go around saying, well, I would be there, but, uh, but for this or that. No, I just, I just have to accept myself as for whatever and whoever I wound up being and, you know, and, and just do the best I can. My soul, I can tell you, is perfectly intact. My, um, it's not a fear of people. It's that I, I don't get enjoyment out of, um, crowds of people or, you know, or even, um, you know, it's, uh, I like them at a distance, I suppose. Uh, the one thing I do know is I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I just, you know, I could take as much I could, you know, shape whatever shaped me. I didn't shape myself. Uh, whatever did, whatever it did, I didn't do it, but you know, there, there it is anyway. You know, I didn't mean to be run over by a truck, but it happened. And so there's nothing I can really do about it. I guess they win. I lose, but you know, I'm, I'm still going. I, I'm not going to look at it that way. I'm just going to do the best I, I got with what, with what I got and do the best I can. And if people don't understand or they, they, they want, it's the people that want, you know, this is typical of Hollywood people. They want everybody the same and everyone at the same party and everyone at the same, you know, to, 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 to socialize the same. It's like, screw you, man. You know what I mean? You go live in your own hive mind and your own, you know, the nightmare worked out great for you, but not for me. So I'll, I'll shine it on. Thank you very much. You know, I'm not interested in, in crowd pleasing or man pleasing. And I don't really even think there's any damage in that sense. I, I think there's basically the Lord shaped me as well to not want, you know, or desire the accolades of man at the expense of my own um, moral compass, if you will, my own um, personhood is even a better way of putting it, my own humanity. I don't want to sacrifice my humanity uh, to lie so I can get along if I can help it. I mean, I'm, I'm sure I've lied sometimes to get along. We all have. That being said, I'm not, you know, I do the best I can with it, you know, with that kind of social anxiety. Uh, no, I didn't. It's it's just, it's a product of people that have been through, you know, this whole targeting thing and, you know, just, I don't know, found themselves um, victimized unfairly by, you know, family or friends for no reason or bullied a lot of times the the scars and that's what it is bullying the scars from being bullied they i don't know that they go away you know especially when it's the kind of bullying that leads to like your friends wanting to kill you for some reason or laugh at you make you a laughing stock harass you or you know do some awful thing um they're just in a group hive mentality it happens in school whatever it it it, it leaves a mark that you you just you know even if you were to 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 try to be a normal social guy, it is still a pall of depression and anxiety that hangs over you that that people can sense and they sense weakness and they might even try to be snarky again, even repeating some of the things that have happened to you um, just because they're unaware of themselves and they're stupid. They're hive minders. They have no thought of their own. They have no soul. They have no mind. They just there. Are you going to let the sock puppets dictate, you know, your reality? I don't think so. That being said, you know, last time I went to a concert, I ended up being the center of, uh, center of the whole thing with, uh, you know, stopping the um, the ritual from completing. And I didn't mean to. I just was like, well, okay, I, I see. You know, and after that, uh, the enemy wouldn't let me go to, you know, it's like every time I tried to go to another con, there was a block. A, a co well, I don't expect anyone to believe it. It's true. Trish knows. Cosmic block. Oh, yeah. They weren't going to be having that experience again. The, the important part of concerts is to get everybody into that same spirit. And then they say it's rocking the house. No, it's getting people possessed. I understand what it is. Me knows what it is. And then when the people complain, I'm depressed, I'm being controlled by this witch, I can't, get any, I can't find any peace, I, now I'm sick with this awful cancer, and I'm dying, and you know everyone's waiting for me to die, and they're treating me mean, I don't know what to do. Well, you know, maybe you should have gone to the truth. Maybe you should have 
you know, owned it. Maybe you should have realized you'd made a mistake with your free will and then corrected that mistake. But I didn't want people not to like me. Yeah, well, you see, there's a problem, isn't there? When the Lord wants somebody, he beats them down. Ah, you get beat down so bad. You don't care what they think anymore. You're just trying to get through the day. Uh, Who cares about the world either? You're just trying to get through that next 15 minutes. See, the people are cruel until it happens to them. And then all of a sudden they go, oh. (laughs) And hopefully they repent, you know what I mean? Because I I don't want to see anybody, uh, you know, wind up blowing it. Uh, this is this is the Olympics here. You know, we're in this uh, high, high-level game here. High, high-level. And the game is, can we get your soul? Well, not if you don't want anything. Yes, you see, that's right. Not if you don't want anything. If you don't want anything, you win. If you want something, you lose. The Lord is my shepherd. I. That's right, folks. I shall not want. I should not want. I have already. I think those are the scariest words in the mind of a Satanist, a worlder, a world worshiper, whatever. I shall not want. I think that drives, I don't need anyone. I have the Lord. I don't need anything. I have the Lord. I don't need anything, anyone, or any time. Any time. Any more time. I have the Lord. Oh my God. This is a monster. I don't need anyone, anything, any time, or anywhere. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want need, beg, ask, you know, cajole, um, you know, pine, opine. I shall not engage in such trivialities. I have the Lord, the most high God, you know, billions and billions of sons within me. I have all the power and all the glory and everything within me that is God, that is all glory to God flowing through me. Okay? Praise the Lord. There is nothing that I don't know. No one I don't know everything there is to know about. There is no situation I don't know of. There is no secret game theory or game that I don't know about if I want to know it. If I don't want to know, then I don't need to know. It's just, you know, it just is what it is. I have no desire to know anything. I have no desire to put, to, to die with the blood on the wall as my plaque goes up, stating I was a good guy. Oh my. Look at that as my eyes are fading as the night is crashing in. I, I got one up there. And they can all, you know, think, wow, that's, that's something, huh? No, they won't do that. Eventually, some guy will come along and say, you were a bad guy and rip it down. Or the civilization will blow and it'll all end up being sand anyway. The castle will fade back into the sea. Uh, And as I like to say, as it should be. I couldn't have to play that song. Okay, guys, that's it, man. You got my best today. I've got more stuff I've got to do today. I've got to find the energy Energize me, energize, energize, baby. Energize, man.